How's it going, guys? Uh, Welcome to Game Sleen Weekly. Here we are again, Wednesday night. Time for another episode of Game Sleen Weekly. I'm gonna turn this damn monitor off here. Yeah, get on that. Come oh, on, man. All Come right, on. there we go. That's better. So what's up, guys? We got some stuff to talk about in the news this week, and then later on we're going to talk about Shadow of the Colossus and Ico. How, when did that come out? Like two years ago? Yeah, <laughs> two years ago. <laughs> yeah, this is a recent game. Oh, two and oh five. Got, as you can probably guess, we got nothing else going on. Sims 4 came out today, but the, you know they didn't release any release copies for that, right? Or they, they, yeah, they didn't give out any review copies to anybody. None to us. No. So, so that's so the most like important. All the reviews that are going to come out for that are going to be coming out like in the next couple of days. There was no like pre-release or review copies that went out. So that's yeah, that's even why. IGN and stuff. They uh, they're still they're just doing like that review in progress bullshit or whatever. <laughs> so uh, yeah, whatever. Yeah. And, and then we got we got. If you liked yeah. one, two, three, you'll probably like part four. Probably. We'll yeah, see. I All right, so. so let's let's get to that news stuff we have. Um, if you've been keeping up with us, we cut our news segment way down because we tended to talk too much about dumb bullshit nobody cares about. So we've only got a couple. We're going to do one to two stories tops every week now. So let's start with this one, Samsung VR, right? Yeah. This thing. Samsung announced the Gear VR. Now, this damn thing, what is this? It uses a phone? Yeah. So, so you have but to, it, the, the thing is with me is that it just, I mean, this is just obviously You have to use the, no, the, the Galaxy future. Note 4, right? Is that what yeah. that is? So it's, it's the, uh, VR is definitely the future. And I mean, this is just proof of, of, of well, that. So. Well, we'll see. Uh, what does this do differently from, say, the Morpheus or the Rift? It's got less resolution, I think, because it's using the smartphone. Yeah. And, uh... Great. <laughs> it's probably going to cost less if you don't consider the, uh, but you're going to need the phone. And it's also got, it does have a, a pass-through camera, which now I think everybody's going to copycat this thing. So what you can do is you can switch the VR mode off and you can look at your immediate surroundings. So like if the phone's going off or if your dog is like, you know, trying to jump through the window or something, you can shut it off and see like what's going on while you're using the thing. Oh, but that's... instead of having to take it off, that's what, I, that's what I read about it. Yeah, but my thing is obviously with the Rift, the Oculus, and now this thing, it's just well, like what I was saying before. It's like this is, I think this is the next step in evolution of end gaming. Well, yeah, we'll see. I'm still waiting for my my copy uh, at my home so I can plug in. Yeah, forever. Again, yeah, seriously. Uh, I don't know. We'll, we'll see, though. I, I've used the Rift. It was cool. I used the Morpheus. It was better. I agree. I agree. Um, this thing's new to me, so... This is supposed to be out this year, though, from what I understand. Really? Yeah, they, would, they wouldn't give a, a, a concrete date, but this will probably hit before the Oculus what, uh, product or the Morpheus. I mean, what are they looking to launch it on? Is it just a PC platform, or is it just strictly with a smartphone? It's just the phone, I believe. Yeah. What's the yeah. point, though, of like a VR headset? It's, it's like Google Glass. It's cheap. It's easy. It's easily accessible. Yeah. It's, yeah. No it's what, that's what people are speculating. They said, oh, knowing, knowing Samsung, they're going to try and keep it as cheap as possible, try and bring in some of the casuals, or try to bring in as broad an audience as possible. Oh, do, like get in a vir <laughs> like a like a virtual reality version of Angry Birds or some shit. Yeah. Like, it could be know. like the, the virtual <laughs> That's the fucking Fifty Day Copy Finals! Yeah, All right, so yeah, we'll that. see. I don't know. <laughs> Samsung VR. Oh, and Oculus is doing the uh, is doing the software though, right? Yes. That so the Samsung is providing the headset and the phone, but Oculus is is helping them out so with is, software. Is this so. like an offshoot of like the Oculus Rift then? Uh, it's a Samsung product, but they're probably going to license some code, and Oculus is going to help them get the software part of it working. I'm still yeah. I'm a little, still a little confused on that. Why? Oh yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm why, skeptical why, too. Why, yeah, why, why, why do I want why? a VR set? For my smartphone, I, I don't know. For me, uh, the other or why? Two, why do you want the substandard version? Yeah, when the other the two. Other, I mean, if I, are gonna come out when you're talking about away. a lesser resolution, everything for me, if I'm going to virtual reality, I want a crisp, clear picture to really pull me into the game. That's the whole point of wearing a headset. So, like, you know, if they're just doing smartphone, you know, the stuff that's available just doesn't seem very compatible for a VR headset or unnecessary, I should say compared to some of these newer games coming out and what I've played on the uh, Rift and the Morpheus. So I guess we'll have to see and find out and um, yeah, see what happens. Okay. Stay yep. tuned. Samsung Gear VR, we'll, t we'll keep an eye on it. We'll see. I'm not sure, though. If it, if it hits this year, it'll be, it could be cool. Yeah. So we'll see. I, I would be willing to try it. But, uh. Yeah. The other news item this week, the AVGN movie. 
right? Came out, he, he released it digitally on a, what is it, Vimeo, or he yeah, released Vimeo, it on one of those streaming services. Yeah, can, $5 rental, $10 purchase, I believe. Uh, he did a select, uh, a few select theater dates for it. I believe they oh, all yeah. sold they, out. Yeah, they did a whole that. tour, and they went all around the U.S. and screened it all over the place. So it's uh, if you like, if you like angry video game nerd, and if you like trauma style movies, um, you, you'll enjoy this. It's, uh, it's about two hours long. It's it's wacky. No, it's see like that a, was, that was like the one thing. It did feel it did <laughs> feel like it did feel like he stretched out a little bit too long. That was my only complaint. Uh, maybe you know, but it. It actually, for me, it really picked up at the end. I was, I was watching, and I was like, okay, you know, we're in the middle of it. And then just, like, I don't want to give anything away, but the end part, I was I was really into. I, I really enjoyed that. So, you know, good for him, though. I know it's, it's something just... It took from, him a long time, right? Watch, yeah, and watching his stuff for a while, I know I know he seemed like he really wanted to make an actual full-length movie, and that, that's pretty awesome, the way he went about and did it. And, it. and it was actually fairly entertaining, Especially for what it was, but even on its own merits, I, I, I did enjoy it. So, if you're a fan, I, you should check it out. I, I, I thought it. I thought it was good. The uh, the things the thing I wanted to note was the the alien is voiced by the guy who voiced Michelangelo in, oh, the, really? in the live action. Yeah, could, could you <laughs> really? Tell? No, the only reason I knew that is like, oh, like I might have been able. You to went figure, all in on this thing. I may have been able to figure that out just by just by listening. But I saw some interview where the guy was talking about how James like asked him to help out with the movie and did all that stuff. So I, I I just like caught this by by accident on YouTube that, or whatever. That's pretty funny. And, so, yeah, there's a bunch of cameos in the movie too, which I thought were uh, were pretty good, just kind oh, of yeah. all over the place. I knew, see, I knew, I knew Nathan's character Keith Abercrombie was going to be in it, but I didn't know like what they were going to do because pretty much all all the Screw Attack friends are in this thing, right? I, I actually and that that yeah. was good. I thought that came off like he like that was completely true to his character. Like yeah. what they had him do was really good. I um I, I totally forgot like he would have had any involvement. I was watching. I was just like, oh man, like he just like pops up at random. <laughs> I was just like, that, that's pretty funny. Um, yeah, they got. I mean, all the all the big YouTubers that he's like associated with are on there. Um, there's some other like minor like B movie celebrities. Like if you're a trauma fan, again, there's uh, the main guy yeah, that there. Was you'll, good. you'll yeah. watch it. You'll see it. It's it's pretty it's pretty funny. So you know, first he's in Guardians of the Galaxy, then he's popping up in this movie. So when you see it, you'll you'll get it. But uh, yeah, good times. You should watch it. Uh, I'll let's see. Is there anything I want? Anything else I want to note about that? Oh yeah, the uh, I watched an interview. Um, the, like Bear McCreary, the guy that scored the mu- the music. Yeah. Um, you know, I was watch. I was looking at some stuff on his site, and uh, I think there was a video or there was a some some type of interview with the nerd, and he was saying like one of the one of the biggest things that he was trying to accomplish with it was like to have the music come in and like when the title screen comes up just have this big like full blast thing where it's like he compared it to the transformers movie where yeah. it's like when that title sequence comes up and it's like the last thing and it, it's like okay there and the logo comes up it's like man you know like okay this is serious shit this is the movie <laughs> yeah. that was like before i read this interview like i, I had seen the movie the night before and that, that was one of the sticking points. I was like, man, I was like, they they really got that because it just it just comes up like full blast. Oh like, yeah, oh, it's shit. like showing yeah. your face. And comes. Yeah. yeah, definitely. That was one of the things I remembered about the movie, though. So then when I read that interview, I was like, yeah, I was like, he was on point for that. So. I, uh, I'll quote John Hammond from Jurassic Park to say that title sequence he spared no expense. <laughs> <laughs> yep. All right. Uh, so let's move on. So this week we're going to do a look back at Ico and Shadow of the Colossus. Now this was recently, yeah, re- recently. This was released a while back on PlayStation Three, and let's see, and then even here. more of a while back on uh, PS Two. Yeah. yeah. So I can start off by saying now I didn't play these when they I, I played them on PlayStation Two, but but in recent years, like I'd say within uh, five or so years ago, I played them back to back. But not so not on the PS2 when they were originally released because I was still catching up. I was a PC gamer for a long time, and then I only got the PS2 like back in back in 07 or 08. I can't even remember. Yeah, I remember you were so, always yeah, backed I, up I, I, with I games. I was like delayed, wicked, wicked on the console stuff. But I did play these on the PS2, and then when the Shadow of the Colossus and Ico Collection came out on PS3, I was like. All right, cool. They've upscaled the graphics. They've fixed a bunch of stuff. You know, in Shadow and the Colossus, where like the the models for the for the Colossi are just so huge, like they brought the PS2 to its knees with that thing. Yeah, and that was like PS2 right near the end of its cycle, I believe, because that came yeah. out in 05, So 
but I mean, I'll stick with Ico first. I mean, this this is obviously this is the HD remake, and it. I mean, both games to me hold up extremely well, and as far as you know, graphics and even gameplay is concerned. Um, I don't know. It's it's everything about, especially Ico, is just done really well. Um, even just like the, the gameplay elements of like uh, the puzzles and even um, and even fighting the the uh, what the shadow creatures, um, even that that aspect uh, again works well. Even though it's predominantly a puzzle game, but yeah, yeah. Uh, this game, you know, it, it kind of blew my mind when it first came out because I really like The Legend of Zelda, and to me, this game felt like one really long, really clever. Uh, dungeon out of the Legend of Zelda series like if you just you know the beginning of the game you're in the entrance the end of the game you defeated the last boss and yeah but all just all one game and you know that's not to say though it's um, repetitive or anything you know there's different areas of this castle that you're exploring that all have unique uh, features that you know change as you progress through the game you know, it really fell under the radar when it first came out. So it's so funny now that you know people like people have to gush all over this game, and it's well worth gushing over. But when it first came out, you know, I don't think a lot of people were talking about it. It was just yeah. one of those, you know, check out this unique adventure game. And it, it caught my eye because it did look different, and I just, you know, I purchased it on a whim. Yeah. And I was, you know, I, I was, I was really hooked on that. So, you know, to me, I was telling everyone about this. You got to try this game out. It's amazing, and, I, and that's and I've stuck with that description of, you know, if you like Legend of Zelda, this is like just. It's like a big, you know, dungeon out of that game. The whole game is just one large, like, Zelda dungeon. Yeah. And, um, you know, eventually everyone caught on. Everyone's like, yeah, these games I, are awesome, which led to that, you know, really, really good uh, HD remake. I think the what pro most likely brought the HD remakes on is probably, you know, hearing about The Last Guardian. Uh, the same, you know, obviously it's the same team. So people are like, oh, there's, you know... People are still kind of interested in these games. Let's put an HD remake out, and they—they, they, I think they like to me like they really delivered on them. Um, I don't know, just like this game. These games are so awesome. I played these like you played it when it first came, really when it first came out. Mm -hmm. I played it only a couple of years ago, and again, this is a game that would was totally because I used to watch you play it. That was like intimidating to me. Just like I don't know, like even seeing stuff like this. Just, like, I've always had the fear. I was like, oh, I'm going to die all the time. Like, I can't play this game. But, like, I finally played it, and it's so good. Uh, I definitely w prefer this way uh, way more than Shadow of the Colossus, which is surprising to people because a lot of people like really? Shadow of the Colossus way more, yeah. I mean, way we'll get to the... Is, I, I don't know. I, I think Shadow of the Colossus is awesome. Both pretty awesome. I don't know which one I'd prefer more, to be honest. I like Echo way they, more. They're, they're both connected, but they're both, to me, they're very different types of games. Yeah. Even though they're technically in a sh what I consider a shared universe. Yeah. Um, well, it, it definitely is. Yeah. I think Ico is the simpler of the two, though. Right? Yeah. Because it's, it's a lot. The scope is smaller, and what you do. I mean, it's it's just a lot of puzzle solving, and it's really basic compared to Shadow of the Colossus. Oh, no, very yeah. true. But uh, I mean, you know, still like an amazing game. Uh, you know what? I was really disappointed though that we never got the um, the extra features that say I believe I don't know if it's just the Japanese release or if a European release got a two, but there was, you know, you beat the game, you'd unlock like a two player mode. Um, there was, I believe there was an extended ending and there was a feature where you play through it again and all the subtitles were translated um, for the language that uh, I believe it's just what Yorda speaks. Yeah. Um, you, you can't understand or well, you can unlock a translation for that, but they never brought that state side, which uh, I, I did find kind of disappointing because I, you know, I really enjoyed this game and, and it was good because there was a lot of subtlety to the world in the story. It didn't shove it didn't shove it down your throat, but by just by exploring and looking around and seeing the little bits of story here and there, you could really connect the dots and, and yeah. get a feeling for the world, which was later continued in uh, Shadow of the Claw. That's the thing. Which, like they, had, it, there was there was a plot to this game, but it wasn't. There, it was a good plot, but it wasn't like the main focus. They really, uh, they really left it up. To, uh, it was it was subtle like subtle, it was subtle um, story, but they really just again focused on strictly on gameplay, and they added a mixture a, a good mixture of oh there's some like I said a good action sequences. There's not a lot you don't fight those shadow creatures a, a ton, uh, but you fight them enough where it's it's a good mix up, um, and they're not so over. I thought like I said before I thought they were going to be so like you know 
so annoying and, 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 and way too difficult, but you know, uh, it's definitely not the case. They're obviously, they're pretty much easy to handle. Uh, like I think it's just there for uh, you know well, to mix it up a bit. They're there to break it up, and I, I tell you, like I, I figured looking at this too, the combat, you know, from playing it right off the bat, like I knew I was like, okay, this is a very simplified combat. Um, kind of makes me think of uh, Prince of Persia: Sands of Time. It's there as like. I don't want to say filler because that's that's kind of a negative well, word for this game. But it's there. To, it's a good filler, it's though. It's there to kind of like, yeah, to give you some variety. But it's certainly not a deep like combat system. Uh, I tell you this though, when you're talking about intimidation about this game, that you know, if there's anything intimidating about this game, and I and that's what intimidated me when I first looked at, at this game and read about it. I was like, all right, but I jumped in anyways. Was you know the the puzzles are definitely you got to pay attention to your surroundings. They're almost you know it's it's like an intimidation the same way you'd get intimidated by a game like Mist. Like yeah. you look at it and you're just like, oh, there's a lot well, the, here to figure out, and you know, not near on the same difficulty level, but it's that you know, that's the one thing where it's like, you know, it's it, not everything's very straightforward. You really get to look at your surroundings, and some of the later puzzles do get pretty clever. Um, and you know, once you figure it out, though, it's very satisfying. Yeah, you're getting the sword here. Once you get the sword, and everything seems to, as far as combat goes, makes things a little bit easier. But as far as like protecting Yorda. Um, it is it I, I, again it goes back to the intimidation factor where it's like oh kind of like with resident evil 4 you're like oh i'm gonna have to like take care of her while i'm trying to do something else and like i don't want i don't want to worry about this character like i wish she'd just be like somebody that could almost take care of herself but again they they did it they uh the developers uh you know created this did an awesome job with it where it wasn't super over the top and difficult uh and it was pretty much easy to I, handle um, yeah, I, I really did like actually protecting her, though. I thought that was... Yeah, it worked the really well. I liked, I liked just even the animation of grabbing her and pulling her along by the hand or helping her up. It um, To me, it, it kind of built in a connection to the character. Yeah. Um, even though you couldn't understand what she was saying, you know, after a few hours with this, it's like, you know, your objective was... Plus one? Plus one? Yeah, exactly. I love that. <laughs> totally. The, the hand-holding mechanic, like, that was just super well done because you have to grip that trigger... And you hold it down, and he holds on to her. You let it go, and he lets go of her hand, right? Yeah. And then the 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 rumble feature actually matches the animation. So if he's running, he's like he's he's tugging her along, and it like it completely matches. That was like that was really well done. Yeah. Yeah, it really immersed you, um, and just like having her like jump across the platform, having to hit that trigger to like grab her, and you got that like that. That feeling of like, like oh, we're like, we're just got her, like just caught her in time. They, that like, happens a lot, and you will even see, or Iko will like, like you said, like she om- she'll almost make it, and he'll like he'll gra- he'll reach it has, down. It, uh, it gives you that uh, that Indiana Jones type feeling where it's like you just barely escaped, barely made it through, um, and it's uh, it, it provides a, a, a good level of excitement, especially for something you don't normally see in like these puzzle heavy games. Um, which, you know, and I, I thought that really helped it stand out. That and it's, you know, really interesting art style, which, you know, that's a, for me a big reason why. That's the thing, like, up. even 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 now, like, like, like I said, this is, like, if you told me this is, like, I feel like this, it's an HD remake, but it looks like it could have came out in just in recent years anyways, because I think the art style and the just the overall graphics are just, they just hold up super well, other than uh, other games that have come out. And I even think it looks better than this HU It looks better than a lot of games today. Um, but again, that it just shows how important art style is. Yeah, so that good. was actually that was actually one of my impressions when I played the uh, the HD collection. Was that Ico probably could have passed for a first gen PS3 game, and then Shadow of the Colossus. Yeah. Shadow of the Colossus HD stands up there with some you know some later PS3 Definitely. titles. I, I would argue. So, yeah, I mean, I don't know. Are we ready to wrap this one up then? Because yeah. we, have, we have footage for the other game. Yeah, this, so this, I mean, definitely get this and check it out if you're into, like, a different style of it. Because, you know, we, you, you definitely see a lot of guys that only play FPSs or they only play COD and Battlefield. And, yeah. you know, this is not, this is not the type of thing that's going to probably appeal to the casual crowd. But I'd say, like, most people, if you're, if you're a well-rounded gamer then and you haven't checked this out, you probably at least know about it and you should definitely try this one. I mean, yeah, the, what's not to be said about this, and, and same with, you know, Shadow when we jump into that, it's, 
I mean, years from now, when people are talking about this generation of gaming, these games are going to be like staples. But so, uh, are we on the? Uh, yeah. This is Shadow Classes coming up right now. Now this was awesome. It was good, but again, I think I think it goes a little bit better. Uh, I think for me though, um, I just felt like the game was. I I feel like part of why I like I go a, a little bit more is just Shadow was just so much more difficult in a in a in an in an annoying way. Uh, the game again was super fun, but I just remember getting so frustrated. Like you know, like one of those with uh, like older games. I I always say anyway, it's like, oh, that's so fucking cheap. Like it's just like these like little things that annoy you. Um, I feel like that happened a lot more than in Shadow of the Colossus. Uh, I you know I gotta tell you when it, I I was so into Ico when it come out. Like I said, it kind of came under the radar. And I feel like that was for a lot of people. Uh, by the time they were announced the Shadow of the Colossus, at this point, I was very familiar with Ico. I'd already played through it. I already gushed about it to a lot of people. So I was waiting on this one. Yeah. Um, and of course, you know, it launches and my PST's broke. So that happened. But, you know, finally it comes out. And I mean, I, I, I managed to get my PSU to work just enough so I could play through this game. And I'll tell you, the first time you get on that horse and you go, like, riding through the fields, like, it, I think the it, it really brought, to me, it, it, it had a shade of uh, Ocarina of Time to it with the horse riding aspect, which is very much a good thing, because uh, you had this huge, open, expansive world to look at, um, and then, of course, there are the Colossi themselves, when you first run into them, you're just, like, amazed, you're just like, wow, look at the scale of these, of these monsters, this is these like a beasts. true... Really, at the time, this was a true, like, next generation, like, boss battle. This was the evolution of, of the boss fight. You know, you had the big uh, monsters with the big glowing orbs, and this game took it to the next level with the way you could scale them and, uh, you know, the different weak points. They Really, the the boss battles against the Colossus were like a puzzle in themselves, which, yeah. you know, I I loved. I You know, this game took what I expected from Ico, and to me, it really kicked it up a notch with, you know, its, its own perspective on the world, which I, I thought was really interesting. What I did like about this game, though, there's, these are the only enemies in the game. There's, there's, there's 16 uh, Colossi, and that's it. Like, they just go one after the other. There's no in-between, like, smaller enemies they have to worry about. It's like you and your horse are just, like, traveling in this big open world, going from one to the other. And, but these, these will take you for, I mean, oh, yeah. well, these will take you a long time. I mean, that's the meat of the gameplay is, you know, figuring out each, each fight. And they're not, you know, they're not two-second fights either. Some of them went on for a long time. That last one, I tell you, that last Colossus at the end of the game is ridiculous. Yeah. And, I mean, that is such a long fight. But, you know, I mean, what it, it's almost, like, hard to say something about this game that already hasn't been said. I mean, it's just, you know, it was such an amazing game, especially at the time and still to this day. And for me, you know, I gotta say I'm a little disappointed though because this came out and I thought a lot more games would take, you know, kind of a, you know, a page from this book of let's, you know, put more boss battles in games. Let's let's mimic. Yeah, this. you don't see you don't see a lot of because boss battles. You, you know, you, and, and you still see them and they kind of come and go. But there was a time where it was like, you know, people were like, "Oh, boss battles is an antiquated idea." And it's like, no, it's like the boss battle is like the payout at the end. Yeah, you, know, you, you get to the head honcho. It's satisfying, and, and yeah. And this took that idea and, and made it even more unique. It wasn't just a big guy that you just smack around a little bit extra until his life bar goes down. You actually have to like figure him out. There's something very simplistic about it. Like it's this is like you just go. You're going after these colossi. For the Ico, it's just like you're in this world and you have to solve these puzzles. It's not. It's not. Their worlds are like desolate, and there's, there's not a lot to them. Yeah, you're not dealing with a million different stats or inventory. Yeah, yeah or it's anything. very it's, simple, it, which is cool. Like, and I like that. But there's so, but but they but they do a lot with uh, with you know with graphics and art style and, and like I said, and like we kept saying, like to me, even I'll say this more than Ico. I I say this looks. Like even more of like a, a PS, at least a PS3 game that uh, just that just come out. To me, again, this was another game where I tell, told everyone I was like, "You got to try this game out." Yeah. 
and then you know I'd say most people play will agree you know they just truly are amazing experiences they you know somebody you don't see come around that often where it's just like it hits all the right points yeah and that's why I'm so like a I mean it's it's whatever now like it's it's totally we're totally past it but even like the last guardian when we were seeing those gameplay footages and and you're seeing like screen captures like the game you knew that game was going to be awesome but unfortunately uh that's not it's probably yeah they hold, say hold, it's not hold, hold that thought i want to i want to get to that at the end before we wrap up but yeah what i what i want to add here though is like yeah you mentioned just the just the game points like you feel bad when you when you kill these things yeah like, you're you're trying to you're trying to bring your whatever your your girlfriend back or whatever but you know you gotta like all right who's who's playing this like like look at this this guy's been sitting on this thing forever i don't think this guy knows what he's doing but yeah you can like i I can i can understand what you said when you said it can be frustrating it's like if you if you climb up one of these things then you just get shaken off like you could spend like five minutes trying to get oh my god it's so frustrating the whole thing over yeah yeah, yeah. like you fall off like even this one showed it when you go on top of his head he he goes down it's an awesome little touch how he goes down he shakes his head it's just like you're hanging there, and it looks so cool, but at the same time, you're like, oh, my God, just stay still that already. That stamina bar yeah. is just, like, slow. Yeah, yeah. it's slow. It goes like, down. No. You're like, no. Oh, no. no. my God. You grip, and then he falls to the ground. And you have to start all over. Then he has to, it's just like, oh, I, my I God, you, though, that last, that last Colossus, man, that's like, it's like, it's yeah, like that is shaped like, like this 15, guy. There's like 15 things you have to do in sequence. Yeah, yeah. It's, that's. I mean, that is a ridiculous fight, and that's a frustrating one because it's one wrong move and you're back to the bottom. And I know what you mean, though. About you feel kind of bad because the thing's just kind of walking around like, rrr, rrr, like just doing its thing. He's not bothering anybody. Like you said, there's no other enemies in this game. It's not like he's like like trampling villages, but you're going to where he's. Yeah, like, that's and you're the like, thing. No, I'm going to stab you th- in the head now. That's that's the thing uh, with if this was. If this is trying to appeal to like a um, like a, ma- a more massive audience, that's what it would do. It would be like, well, we gotta, we gotta. Uh, this thing has to be attacking villages, killing people, and it's up to you to stop them. With this though, what makes it even more uh, more un- unique? They're kind of on their own. They're not bothering anybody, but it's up to you. You have to go and kill them. So two of the things I want to mention before we close this one out. Um, Two of the things I really liked was the music because there's not yeah. like like right here where you're just tooling around. There's like there's nothing going on in in the uh, in the overworld. It's just it's just you on the horse. There's some environmental sound effects and yeah. stuff, but there's no music. It's just it's just sparse. Like everything, just nothing. That's when you the get simplicity. to the when you get to the Colossus fight, though, you know each each Colossus has its own theme. I think so, some of them are some of them are reused, but there's, there's a few different battle themes, and then there's uh, there's just the the guy the guy that scored this. I don't think he does many video game soundtracks, but uh, Ko Otani did the music for this, and I think he's done anime and stuff. But he just he just nailed it with this one. The music really fit each of the situations, and it was just it's an excellent video game score. I thought so that was good. And then the other thing was actually the right here the horse riding right so i saw a lot of people complain about this and they said oh the horse controls like shit what the hell like why is it so difficult to control the horse and if if you pay attention the developers stated that when you're when you're riding the aggro the horse you're not you're not controlling him you're still controlling wander and aggro aggro is a horse he, he's going to yeah, do yeah. his own thing sometimes and that was that was really cool that they programmed that in so he's got like an underlying ai and stuff and so you know you can direct him with wander and you can like you can steer him where where you want to yeah, go I, but like he's not going to jump off huge cliffs and like he's not going to yeah. sometimes he doesn't turn well. exactly when you want him to <laughs> yeah I it's, mean, co- it's a cool I, I little feature. Um, There's one, like one or two fights where I was getting, like, I had to rely on him a little bit more. Oh yeah, they, like, yeah, oh, he, yeah, oh, we're they're in that, a horse yeah, back. He, you he have is, to like fight he, the arrow. They do, yeah. yeah, they do involve the horse. Where so, so you do have to, you do have to rely on aggro on some of those. Uh, that, again, that was another thing that was like super frustrating. It's like, oh my god, just do what I want you to do. But everything else, I felt like just worked really well. And you're right, you know it's not the horse you know aggro is not a vehicle it's you know it's your companion and and you get that uh you get that Ico yorda companionship in, in this game with yeah. your horse uh aggro to an extent and it pulls on some hard strings when you when you play yeah. through the game and definitely if you haven't played any of the either or Ico or shadow classes like you have like i think it's i think both of these games are 
if you like video games, you have they're like almost, they're like a must play. Like you have to play these if you like I, video I'd games. I'd say definitely if you're if you're a fan of of gaming in general, you, you owe it to yourself to at least give them a shot. I'll agree with that. Yeah. Uh, you know, at least one or two of them. If you're more of an action focused gamer, which I know, especially this generation, which I I love. Um, there, there's if you're if you're more into the action like Twitch type gameplay, you probably enjoy Colossus more than you would Ico. But uh, certainly for someone like myself, and you have a wide uh, variety of taste for your gaming, you like you know the slow-burning adventure games, you like the quick-paced action games, you like it all, you know, both worth jumping into. Really immersive, fun game played without uh, shoving a story down your throat. You know, you, yeah. you kind of figure it out on your own, and it's you know, the game the game respects you as a player, and and you can see that, and, and the payout for playing through both of them is you know really worth it. It's a very satisfying experience. Yeah. Fine. Now just released Last Guardian and uh, all right, yeah, there, there you go. That leads into so so to wrap up, you know, Last Guardian. Oh man, like what what the hell? That's why I haven't haven't played these two games. You know, yeah. I go and Shadow of the Colossus. They've been teasing and they've been saying, oh, you know, <sighs> to me, Last Guardian. To me. They had it at they had it at one of the PlayStation press conferences at E3 a few years back, and yeah. it's like, what what is going on? And then we find out the director is like. Working as a contractor now, he doesn't so work it, for Sony anymore. Yeah. So how, how does this happen? I don't know. So you I, around e, around E three, what happened was oh, I was like, oh, the, there was rumors that the the uh, the Last Guardian was canceled, and then the developer came. I was like, oh, it's not canceled. So you, I thought we were going to see it at E three. We didn't see it at E three. And to me, like this is the last year um, the game had a chance because it's like well. Once the game kind of come out now, it's, game, it's, it's, a, game, P- it's yeah. a PS4 project now. I mean, that's the thing. They, they could be completely rehauling it for PS4. And I, I, mean, I really hope so. You know, I try not to think about it anymore because you're right. I was expecting something mentioned at this E3. It wasn't. But maybe because they don't want a half-ass port either. They don't want that's a... True, yeah. um, like Twilight Princess Zelda, like that was when it's like they announced it for the Wii, and it was like they kind of just slightly ported it to the Wii, but it looked exactly like the GameCube version. It was kind of half-assed, not the game itself, but the fact that they ported it onto a next-gen system. Whereas I feel like this one, maybe we didn't see it because they're just really completely overhauling it. We want to be blown away. We don't want to. I don't want to look at the game and say, "Oh, it looks nice," you know, especially for the time it was made. I want to look at the game and go, "Holy, Holy shit!" shit. Yeah. Like this game looks beautiful, amazing. I'm sucked in. So. If they need to take extra time to do it to completely relaunch or rework it for the new hardware, great. Because mm-hmm. um, there's certainly enough coming out now where I'm going to be busy, and I want to be t- I want to be surprised by the game again. I don't want to kind of yeah. I mean, these games don't it, so. these games don't. I don't. They don't like be around the bush. They do everything like a hundred percent. Yeah, they do so it, they, they do it well. So it. exactly, I say that that's probably what they're doing. But yeah, play these games. Don't fuck I'm around. Willing to, I'm willing to bet it's a PS4 project at this point. I, I really hope so. No yeah, way. definitely. So, you know, th- and that's the thing. Like, how, how do you get away with, like, essentially, I mean, I hate to use the word waste, but they wasted the entire PlayStation 3 console. So, like, yeah. like, what, like what were they doing? And I heard rumors that Team Ico had perks similar to what the, well, you guys keep mentioning Zelda, so, similar to what the Zelda team has at Nintendo, you know? Like, yeah. you know, these guys, they turn out quality stuff, so Nintendo recognizes that. They probably get decent wages, and they get all kinds of extras on top of their, you know, whatever, bonuses. So they're they're valued employees. Like, and if, if that's true, I don't know. That was just a rumor I heard. If these guys are getting similar similar treatment to the Zelda team at Nintendo, like, like what what is going on? Like, well, come on, I man. mean, then... You know, similar to Zelda, and it's hard to compare because I know people like to say, well, there's a million games in that franchise. There's not that many considering the franchise launched in, like, 87 or something like that. Maybe 89. I forget. Um, so they skipped the generation. Let's let's see him put out something yeah. else. So, you know, I want, some connect- I want it to be somehow connected to the other games, but I want it to be its own separate thing. I want... And I just want it to look nice too. Yeah, yeah. I guess I guess that kind of goes into. You said they skipped a generation. Yeah, they did. But why? I wish they just didn't release it so early. Like, like in, in games. You, I guess this kind of goes into another discussion. Like games being like released don't, too don't early. Say, don't say shit until you have a release date. Like nailed yeah, down. yeah, people <laughs> like that. That was, I think last Gar- the last Guardian was like revealed in two maybe two thousand eight two thousand nine. And it's still it's it ta- it's taken like four e- like this long. It's still not out yet. And same with like uh, like Final Fantasy fifteen or whatever. Like when's that game gonna be released? You know, not for probably not for another couple of years. Like I'd rather you be like, oh, this game's gonna come out next year. Not I'd rather 
than having that long anticipation or something like yeah, this with The well, Last there's, Guardian. There's happens. things to be said, especially a franchise like this now, where, like I said, it originally fell under the radar. Now it has that, that hype to it. So they're, they're going to release stuff early because they want people to anticipate. They want people to build up hype. So even if it's a little teaser, it's like... And then same thing with Final Fantasy. I mean, people know Final Fantasy. So they release something saying, hey, we got this game coming out. TBA yeah. release date. Well, people are going to be... You know, right when they mention that, people are on the message boards, you know, different topics. Well, what do you think is going to happen? I think this is going to happen. There's a lot of discussion yeah, there's going a on. Lot, there's hype they, I like the discussion and the hype, but it's and like... That's, I mean, but that... You that, that, cut it short, though. Like, there's... I don't know. That 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 helps build a game, though. Sometimes it ruins it um, because yeah. there's too much hype, but... I mean that's you know that's a that's a big selling point for these games or not a selling point but it's a you know part of their marketing really it's you know give them information now let us you know let us drool over the thought of playing this game for a couple of years and release it we're gladly hand over our hard earned cash yeah. and uh, you know we'll be first in line to buy it because we've been you know anticipating waiting for so long you know we waited this long we can't you know once it releases we have to be first in line and that's i think that's kind of the thought process behind it especially where these two games are really successful the re-releases i think even brought even more success i mean so once you know they're gonna get a major uh major release on their hands once they eventually release uh or just keep stringing us along and don't release it yeah that. that's true but you know, any any in bit of information, we're all going to be waiting around with uh, bated breath, just waiting. So, you know, balls in your court, Team Ico. Now, uh, hurry up. Uh, let's see something. Yeah. Shoot, forgot what I was going to say. Uh, <laughs> great. great game. <laughs> it really is, though. Play both of them. Play them back to back if you want to. Like, why not? Yeah, wasn't wasn't the Shadow and the uh, Shadow of the Colossus and Ico collection like thirty bucks when it came out? Yeah, it wasn't. It was like forty. It was like forty. It was like thirty. It wasn't, or 40. A, it wasn't a full price. No, it was, so it was pretty I was cheap, like, and it's good. definitely that was worth good it. Value, definitely. Yeah. Oh man, yeah. That, well, oh yeah, that that's what I was gonna say. So I, th- I think you're right. At this point, it's better to just ignore it because otherwise yeah. you're gonna be disappointed. This is this is a Half Life Three situation with this. Last Guardian bullshit. Or Shenmue point. 3. Shen- oh my it's gosh. It's all those games. It's like when it's announced or re announced, it's going to be like. <sighs> but at this point, <laughs> I try not to think about it because, you know, I don't want to say anyone's dropping the ball because, you know, if they're going to make it, they're going to take their time. With these franchises, you got to take your time. You know, I hate, I don't want to say perfection, but I will. You know, anything less than perfection is unacceptable at this point. So, take your time. But yeah. when it comes out, it's you, 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 people are going to flip out. It people should are be gonna flip out, and it, I think it'll be well worth the wait. Yeah. All right. Well, there you go. I think that's going to wrap things up, guys. So. uh Man. <laughs> for, for more for more news and videos, check out our website at Games Lean TV. Next week, I think we're going to talk The Sims 4. We'll see. All right. uh, we got we got a new episode of Games Lean Gamblers coming out probably this weekend, so be on the lookout for that. Any other final words? Yeah. No. Uh, well, I think next week there's, there's some like small windy game coming out. I think it's called uh, Destiny. Oh, Destiny. <laughs> might, might might have to talk about that a little bit. Yeah, if you want to talk about that. I mean, I'll, I'll clock in about 15, 20 hours in it by the time we're here next week. So, uh, yeah. But uh, look forward to playing that. Not, or we here. don't. Who knows? Check out our top five list. All right, guys. Thanks for joining us. Keep playing. We'll see you next time on Game Sleeve.